I make a lot of digital art, and after all this trial and error, finding inspiration, watching YouTube tutorials, I've arrived at an art style that I don't feel trapped by and I'm just super happy to draw in. So today I'm going to be giving you a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how exactly I achieved this step in one look. That's right, there's no stealing going on here, only the wholesome collaborative exchange of knowledge. I will be sharing my drawing process with the world so you too can draw in Zeppi style. So if you want to try out any specific step of my art style, for example only colouring line art, but don't want to start a whole drawing from scratch, I've put the deconstructed artwork on my Discord server in the resources channel just here, where you can download and continue from whichever step you'd like. So without further ado, let's get into step one, the materials. This is the sum total of what I'll be using to draw this artwork and what I've likely used to draw anything I've made in the past two years. For hardware, I have my Samsung Tab S8 Ultra and its native pen. I like using an Android tablet to draw because I can bring it along with me whenever I travel around. This is important to not only my art process but also to my health because if I don't draw at least once in the span of 72 hours, well, my doctor told me I'll crumble to ash and sort of, uh, die. This tablet is pretty big. I used to have a smaller one which was the Tab 7 but I decided to splash for its bigger brother because I have extremely responsible spending habits. I've been using Clip Studio Paint for two years now. I have EX which is the version with better webtoon and animation capacities. Do I make the most of these features? Absolutely not. Do I still pay for it though? Yes, and with a smile on my face. You can still follow along with this tutorial if you don't have Clip Studio Paint, but make sure to pay attention to the brush configurations I'm about to explain so that you can replicate my brush in whatever other program you use. My brush is just a regular hard round brush with low pressure sensitivity. There still is some, but as you can see, it doesn't take much pen pressure for the brush to reach its maximum size. My brush also has anti-aliasing turned off. What this means is that the brush won't smooth the pixels out on the edges of the stroke. Instead, I get these jagged pixely edges. I do this because it allows me to use the fill tool with more precision and less cleanup because the colour goes straight to the liner without me having to play around with any fill tool settings. And I don't actually use an eraser. I just use the transparent colour on my normal brush which you can get by selecting the gritty white pattern or which I recently found out by eye dropping the outside of the canvas. I also use this filling brush, but this is completely optional as you can achieve the same effect using the magic wand tool which I'll be explaining later. This is what my workspace looks like. I have all my windows on one side because I shan't make my hand go through the arduous journey to reach the right sidebar. Navigator is up top, mostly just for the flip button. I have my colour slider here. Say hi little buddy. <coughs> then my brush settings, which includes the brush variations, settings and sizes. Below that is layers. My typical canvas size is 21 centimeters by 29.7 centimeters, which is an important size for printing, but I often resize and adjust my canvas size midway through my artworks. This canvas size usually allows me to use a comfortable 20 pixel width on my brush. Okay, now that we know what we're gonna be using to make this art, let's get straight into actually putting it all together. For references, I use a combination of pictures of myself posing, 3D models, my poses Pinterest board, and stock images on Google. But if it's something simple, I usually just make it up as I go, which is sort of what I did here. I start my sketch at the head and work my way down, creating a rough sketch of the body. In this rough sketch stage, I just keep it simple and can leave some parts up to later me. I'm just focusing on creating a scaffold for the rest of the character. When I'm satisfied with the rough sketch, I turn the opacity down to about 5-15%. to The rough sketch is now very faint, and I can begin working on the proper sketch. I start with the face. The way I draw eyes is quite simple. There's one line on the top and one line on the bottom. I play around with their angles and sometimes connect either side to communicate different designs. We're drawing Zeppi, so the lines are disconnected, and there are three longer lashes on the bottom. I don't worry about making the eyes too symmetrical here as I'm drawing an expression on the character. I usually alternate between a dot, a C shape and a line for the nose. The mouth is just a rectangle and I don't bother drawing any teeth in. 
Considering the rest of my art style is fairly simple and I use thicker line art, I try to put few details on the face as to not overcrowd it. I draw hair in curvy pointed strands, usually leaving a plain zone across the top for highlights. I find that this sweeping hair motif is something I use really often. I used to practice it just by drawing these shapes over and over in a chain. So if this is something you're looking to develop, you can give this a go. For hair with curlier or coilier textures, I use a bit less of the pointy strand and more of the fluffy part of this shape. In the proper sketch stage, I decide the rest of the clothes and also mark where significant creases and folds will be. I'll accentuate this later in the rendering stage. For the parfait, I reference some sprites from none other than Yokai Watch because the food in that game just made me want to take a bite out of my 3DS and look that good. I try to get this sketch as close to how I want the final lines to look so my brain can just zone out and go on autopilot for the line art. Now that the sketch is done, let's move on. I start by hiding the rough sketch layer and turning the proper sketch layer down to about 5-10%. to I turn it down this low because it helps me create neater line art and rely less on the sketch. I used to have the sketch layer with a higher opacity, but it led me to miss parts of the line art that were slightly wibbly and should have been redone. In order to make my line sufficiently crispy, I try to use as few strokes as possible, aiming to complete curved or straight segments of lines in a single stroke. If I have to use two strokes, I zoom right into the canvas and make sure that the connection between the lines is seamless when looking at the artwork as a whole. Considering that I don't use pen pressure to determine the size of my brush, I do my lines in very fast strokes, making them smoother. Sometimes, usually when I'm doing artworks for fun, I'll go over the same line twice to accentuate it and give the line art a little bit of texture. You can see this used in this artwork. To help make my colouring easy later, all lines and sections should be enclosed. Now that we have some lines complete, I'll be moving on to colouring. I use this brush to colour my line art quickly and lay a base. I draw around the line art and it just fills it all in automatically. Alternatively, you can use the magic wand tool to create your base. Using the magic wand, select the outside of your line art. Then just invert and fill the area with a solid colour. I usually use the skin tone as a base colour. Then I set this layer to protect alpha. It also makes sure that you can only draw on the base colour area and not on the rest of the canvas. Then I start blocking in our base colours. I come up with colour ideas inside my brain meat and make them using the slider. I don't use any palettes because I sort of have a method to how I choose colours. As a general rule, I try to avoid putting any of these settings on maximum. So for example, if I need white, I'll have the brightness slightly lower and a tiny bit of hue peeping through. My colours generally lean towards the warmer side. So for example, if I choose a green, I'll move it slightly towards the yellow part of the slider. I play around with the colours until I find something I like, recycling colours wherever possible. For example, if the shirt and the cream puffs are both white, I'll use the same colour. I try to avoid using any colour effect layers at this stage, instead focusing on manually adjusting the colours to my liking. However, if I find that the colours in general look sort of dull, I use the tonal correction effect and drag the sliders slightly closer together. Now that we have the base colours down, it's time to get to rendering. First, we need to consider our light source. More often than not, I use diffuse lighting that comes from the top left. I mean, the sun is in the top left, so where else would the light come from? To be honest, accurate lighting isn't really a priority for me. So if it's between making something look cooler and making something look more accurate in rendering, I'll always choose to have the chunky neck shadow or a ray of light which perfectly illuminates a little triangle on the nose. So now that we have the light source sort of in mind, we're going to focus on airbrushing. Make sure the opacity for this brush is low. The epicenter of your airbrush should be at most 10% because we need the freedom to keep the colour application light or to layer it if we need it darker. Even so, I'd recommend setting your airbrush size a little bit larger than the area you want to colour, so you can use the edges of the brush stroke rather than the centre. 
I usually start off with the face, selecting it using the magic wand tool and then putting a slightly more saturated and darker colours over the cheeks using my airbrush. Sort of like a blush, but in this case leaning towards more orange and brown rather than pink. For darker skin characters, I would use a colour that leans in towards more red and brown. The next airbrushing section is the bangs. I colour pick the skin tone and then darken it slightly. For darker skin characters, I colour pick the skin tone and lighten it slightly for the colour I'll apply on the bangs. I select the hair using the magic wand and brush it around the face with the edges of my airbrush, colouring the hair. Erase any excess which ended up not on the bangs. Thirdly, I do the rest of the hair. I choose a colour slightly darker and use the gradient tool to create a slight shift in colour. I usually start the gradient a lot lower than the hair because I choose a very dark colour, so the edge of the gradient works just fine. For the clothes, I repeat a similar process, applying a soft gradient upwards using a slightly darker and more saturated colour. For limbs, I use the manual airbrush again and shade the right side of everything, keeping the light source in mind. So now I apply the hard lighting. Starting off again at the face, I add the blob nose highlight using a very bright colour. In this case, I use pure white, but if I'm drawing something that's in a slightly different lighting scenario, or drawing a darker skin character, I'll adjust this highlight to be something bright in the context of the colours I'm using it on. For the shading on the face, I basically apply a soft shadow around the entire perimeter of the face. Sometimes I'll also add an additional bit of airbrushing on the bottom right hand corner. When shading the hair, I use a slightly darker colour, which still stands out from the gradient. I use a lighter colour on the area of the bangs which has been airbrushed, as to not create too strong of a contrast with the lighter colour. I use more shading at the bottom of the hair near the neck and less at the top. I make sure to leave a space which is free of shadows to place my highlights. To create highlights, I use these little blobs, making sure to draw both long strands and also short individual dash highlights. I add a slanted line under the head to create a neck shadow. Sometimes if the hair of the character is thick enough, I'll just fill in the entire area, or add a gradient, which I've done here. To render clothes, I use large polygon shapes, avoiding curved lines unless the clothing is very fitted to the body of the character. I sometimes apply gradients to the shading to make it blend more readily into the base colours. I also apply hard shading to the limbs, adding bigger triangular shadows under sleeves, pant legs or skirts and a little edge around the rest of the arms or legs. For the rendering of the desserts, I again reference the Yokai Watch sprites and distinguish the textures of each ingredient. I added a bounce shadow on the chocolate sauce to make it look like a thick liquid. I applied a gradient to the mango slice to make it look extra juicy. To create the parfait cup, I used a gradient tool and drew some impromptu line work and highlights. Since the parfait is one of the focal points of this drawing, I made sure to really focus on the rendering and add lots of details to draw your eye to it. So that's my rendering pretty much finished. I used to disregard the importance of colouring your line art when I first began digital art, but now it's an irreplaceable part of my process. I choose a base colour which is most of the time a very dark blue or purple. I use Protect Alpha again on the line art and fill it in with our base colour. Then I begin colouring. Similarly to how you chose a shadow colour before, making it darker and a bit more saturated, take it to a darker level to choose your line art colours. I usually leave the outer lines of the line art and the outer lines of the limbs as the base colour, filling everything else in by colouring it. If one dark colour and one light colour are separated by one line, I choose the line art colour according to the darker colour. Once the lines are fully coloured, I unprotect alpha and add a little sparkle in the eyes. The reward for drawing a whole artwork. So from start to end, that's how you draw Zeppi style. Before the video ends, I just want to let you know that you don't have to credit me or call any of this Zeppi style if you produce an artwork based off this tutorial or incorporate any of this into your own drawing process. It's just a silly name I came up with because I have a morbid addiction to slapping some derivative of the word Zeppi onto everything. I definitely didn't pioneer any of these techniques and I'm not trying to claim I invented them. So please, I encourage you to take away any or all of my methods from this video to create some of your own digital art. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you learned something from this whole process and I'll see you in the next one.